But how do I shoot on my M100? Okay, uh, let's. I'm gonna use some notes just so I don't miss anything. Got a lot of things that I need to remember. So how do I use when I when I go out to shoot on my M100? Um, there's there's two levels to it. There's one. There's the technical details. I know you guys have asked me to show you the technical stuff. Like what are your settings? Now any photographer that's worth their salt will tell you look it's never as simple as settings you know obviously different things happen the sun's coming out or going down and you'd have to change your settings accordingly so there isn't a one size fits all where it comes to street style settings however I can show you what I'm using on a day like today and I can kind of let you know the thinking behind how I do my settings so that's what I'm going to try and do there's two sides to it there's the technical side of it which is all camera settings and then there's other things like what is my thinking let me get into my psychology I know this kind of makes you wait a bit before I get in settings but when I go out shooting on the streets like on a day like this usually there's different kinds of street photography and I've been doing this now for about nine months obviously this channel Leo does street is about is about how I've been learning street photography by actually doing it and I've tried different styles of photography so some of the styles that you can do for example you can have shots where the people are not important okay the people are just accessories to your shot so you might do like silhouettes you might do like shadows of people just the way the light is playing you might get some of the back of someone just an umbrella or a piece of their clothing that is like one style of photography where it's very artistic very fine art very cool and trendy and I've done that style and kudos to the people who really know how to do it well um, but that wasn't for me because typically you have to wait a long time to get those kinds of shots and I just don't have the patience for that um, but also I'm super interested in people like I I love people watching I'm interested to know who are the people behind you know these 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 clothes that I see and who comes to this place who looks like that so I'm very fascinated by people so that's the kind of psychology and that's that's what I bring with me when I come out onto the streets so as I've been doing different styles in learning street photography I also learned that there's shock value there are street photographers that like to shock you with the kind of photos they take so they'll take photos of people looking their worst you know you got people who just go out into the streets with flashes and they'll just flash someone in the street and it'll be a stark harsh looking photo there's people that love showing documentary style photography they want to show you life on the streets as gritty as it is but that's not me I, I don't want to <laughs> I'm not trying to show you how terrible the world is or how rough people are having it out here. Um, I'm not trying to be a fine artist out here. I think the thing that moves me is people. I'm really curious about people. So that's what I bring to the game. What about people? I, I want to, to show people at their best. One of the things I love doing on the streets, if you've seen some of my previous videos, is actually talking to people. Maybe that's because I'm a lonely so-and-so, <laughs> but that's, that's where I get a lot of fulfillment, is actually meeting people, hearing their story, and, and that to me is like super rewarding. So that's how I go out. I'm looking for people who are well-dressed and stylish because I want to show people in their best possible light. That's the psychology of it. I want to I wanna, uh, uplift with my photos that's why even the the way that my photos are edited it's not dark and gritty and crushed blacks and things like this I want upbeat and uplifting because I want people to look their best and I want I want to tell a positive happy vibe story so that's that's the psychology I also take a photo like I want to feel like I'm part of the process uh, a lot of street photography is about hiding and kind of being invisible and taking shots and I do that sometimes sometimes you have to do that to get a shot that you don't want to ruin but a lot of the times I want to be a part of the process I'm not like just some weirdo behind my camera I also want to interact with you we had this moment together and that's kind of my thinking so I'm happy for people to see me taking photos I'm happy for them to say hey what's that and then to have a conversation and then to say would you pose for me so then I'll stop people and we'll chat and that's why I suppose it gets easier for me to do street photography, street portraiture, because I actually want to meet people. If you're not the sort of person that wants to actually meet people, that might be a hindrance for you. So think of the people not as subjects and characters that I've got to capture, but think of them as, hey, that's someone I could get to meet today. 
and that's the psychology that might help you to get into street portraiture okay another thing is I'm not a gearhead okay so this is cool and I needed to try something like this for my own personal reasons to do shooting videos and other things but I'm not really into gear gear is great I don't I don't hate on people that like to buy the latest and greatest but I'm actually the reverse in that I I look at a crappy piece of kit or something that's not so great and I take great pleasure in challenging myself to think can I make this kit like how what can I do with it can I really push it to the limits and get something amazing out of what people consider a rubbish bit of kit so that's how my mind works I respond well to challenges so that's typically why I've shot on the iPhone because people have gone oh it's rubbish it's not like a full a proper camera and that to me is like oh well I'm rising to the challenge then I've got to try an iPhone so that's kind of the psychology behind why I shoot with these bits of kit okay let's get into the settings this is what you guys wanted to know and like I said before it's not just about settings there isn't a one-size-fits-all because again it just depends on what the weather is doing if the sun's out it's different settings if it's cloudy if whatever I think you get the point let me show you typically what my mindset is when I'm trying to get the settings right okay so here we go and turn this little bad boy on for those of you that have been asking, someone asked me what a dead cat was. So this is the M100. If you're shooting video, this takes, it doesn't have a dedicated microphone jack, and so the audio tends to be pretty nasty anytime something happens. The best way to protect against wind noises is to put a little bit of furry fluff over your microphone. And that's what we call a dead cat. I don't know why it's called that. Um, not a great bit of imagery, but there you have it. So take the old gloves off uh, right so the first thing that matters to me is shutter speed depending on the photography you're doing it might not matter to you if you get a bit of blur but in my photography I'm taking shots of people's clothes I want to see the texture sharpness is everything to me so in the kind of photography I do, I have to nail the shutter speed. That's the first consideration. I'm not thinking about artistic blurry shots. I'm just trying to nail the focus. The focus has got to be sharp and not blurry. So, here we go. Uh, at the moment, the camera is set to... Automatic mode. You see this little green bit? That's automatic mode. When the green bit is parallel to the camera, you're on auto. When you decide that auto is not doing a good enough job, now you have to go into manual settings, and this is how I do it. So back we go, and put that there, and it tells you manual at the back, manual exposure. Now we can start to play, okay? Back at the settings again. At the moment, it's 100, 250 shutter speed. The far left one is the shutter speed. Shutter speed is how quickly the, the, uh, the uh, shutter opens and closes to capture the light and the photo. The more quickly it does that, the sharper the photo will be. The slower it does that, more light comes in, but you introduce more motion, you capture more motion as well. So that's kind of like the payoff. Right, shutter speed. Is this fast enough? I'm going to see someone walking by, maybe let me just fire for a quick shot of someone walking by and we'll see if 250 shutter speed is good enough for moving subjects in this low light. So a lot of this is about today not being bright. If it was a bright day, I would just shove it on auto and we'd be great. Okay. Right, we've got our photo there. I'm gonna try and zoom in. So yeah, do you see that? It's a little bit blurry. It's not looking sharp as I'd like. And that's typically because the shutter speed wasn't fast enough. So I'm gonna to have to boost the shutter speed, make it faster. The higher the number, the faster the shutter speed. So let's take this and turn it into, why don't we go with what? 
400. Let's see how that goes. Okay, what have we got? Okay, so let's zoom in there. Yes, I think we're getting there. It's, ah, the wall is sharp. I just didn't focus correctly, but that wall is really sharp. This guy's not as sharp as he could be. And if you've noticed, the photo started to get a bit dark. And also I'm seeing that we're losing light. So that's the trade-off. The faster your shutter speed, the less light is coming in and things start to get dark. So I have to compensate for that. And the next thing I'll do is look into my aperture. So the aperture is how wide your lens opens up to capture the photo. So, back to the back of the camera, that's one, 4.5. This is the next one down is aperture, how wide the lens opens to let more light in. So I'm gonna go, I'll touch that, and see how low I can go. 4.5 is the maximum. Sometimes if you zoom out, you can go lower. What? See? I can actually go to 3.5 if I zoom out. So the more zoomed out you are, sometimes you actually lose the ability to open your lens wider, okay? So 3.5, that will let more light in at 400 frames a second. So it's just a case of seeing what's possible there, how fast it will capture anything. Okay. Right then. Let's have a look. So yes, the photo's brighter. Now because I'm far away, I'm not nailing my focus. It's still not as sharp as I'd like, but it is sharper on the lady. <laughs> so, I'm gonna take the ISO up a bit more. So typically I like to leave my ISO at 800, which it is at the moment, ISO 800. The picture is already starting to look a bit grainy and I don't like that. And when you go higher in ISO, ISO kind of increases the sensitivity of the sensor. It doesn't, it's not to do with the hardware. Now it's just what's happening inside the camera body in terms of sensitivity to light. And that can introduce grain. But when I'm using a lens like this, if I have no other options, and let's face it, there's not a lot of great mirrorless Canon lenses at the moment. If I was working with this lens, then what I have to do is I have to decide what to sacrifice. So if I do a slower shutter speed, I'm gonna get blurry motion. I don't wanna sacrifice uh, sharp photos. Um, the, I've opened it as wide as it'll go, and I still need more light, so I'm gonna boost my ISO up just a bit more because I'd rather deal with a bit of grain and maybe fix that by shooting raw, shooting it, doing something in post. That's the sacrifice I'm willing to make. I'm not gonna have dark photos, I'm not gonna have blurry photos, so I might as well have a bit of grain. So, here we go, 800, this will allow me to go up to 1,000, 1,250, let's try that. Right. What picture do I like here? Okay, let's have a look. That's nice and bright. I like the brightness of that. As you can see, it's very soft here, but I think that's just because I wasn't focusing clearly. But this lad's in focus. Oh, ish. But you see, it's a bit more mushy, and that's because I've gone high in ISO. So at this point you're going, ah, oh, Leo, in low light, what on earth do we do? Because like it's mushy all the way through and you've got the light that you wanted, you've got the, you've stopped it, but it's still looking mushy because it's gone up. That is when, my friends, I introduce this. Ha, but you didn't think I was coming from there. This is a 50 millimeter lens. It's not natural to this camera. It's one that I just have for my other cameras. I've got uh, crop sensor bodies and in Canon. So what I can do is take those lenses that I use with my other bigger cameras and actually attach it to this com uh, uh, camera, but they won't attach naturally because this is really tiny, as you can see. That's the benefit of these cameras, mirrorless. They're really tiny. 
So what you have to do is buy yourself an adapter. So if you look at this, this is, I think, an, a really cheap adapter by Meek, a company called Meek. This is decent, it's not expensive, it'll do the job. And you just attach it to your big lens, and then you can attach it to this camera. And this is why I love this little camera, interchangeable lenses. So let's do that and see what happens next. Okay, so we've gotten rid of the kit lens and look at what we've got on there. Look how wide that glass is. So like I said to you before, the wider the glass is, the more light can come in. So what this is gonna do is will allow me to do a wider aperture. Remember the maximum I was able to get up to on, the, on, on this lens was 3.5. But watch this, now when I click this, I can go down to 1.5. Point eight, and that will allow in a lot more light which means I can still have my fast shutter speed and bring down the ISO getting rid of all that awful noise and grain so let's do that so I'm at f1.8 I'm going to take down my ISO let's put it to 400 even just to show off and then what's the Right. Let's have a look. I just took some photos at 1,500, 1.8 at 400 ISO. Okay, let's let's zoom in. Boom! Look at how sharp that is, ladies and gentlemen. See that? Moving subject. Could be better, but the light is all there. All I need to do is nail focus. But look at this guy, he's, he's well in focus, this lad. We're getting there, we're getting there. So, the downside of having something as wide as 1.8 is remember that you've got very, a very narrow range of things in focus and everything else is blurry. So that's the, 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 the trade-off there, is now you're gonna struggle to focus. The light is there, the shutter speed's gonna capture it, but if you go really wide and get 1.8, that very blurry background sometimes you're gonna focus on the wrong thing and get the wrong thing in focus but that's that's what you're dealing with so I'm actually gonna do one more change of settings it's all trial and error really so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to lower my shutter speed and go to maybe 2.8 to give myself an easier time of focusing increase my ISO to 800 and that's going to be it. Let's have a look. Right. Ah, I like this kind of shot. I love these shots where there's so much negative space. Look how sharp that wall is looking. The light is all there. The focus is a bit better. A little bit of mush. But I think we're on our way. We're on our way. Ugh, look at that mushy hair. That's the trouble with a grey day. Mm. I like that. One four hundredths of a second shutter speed. Two point eight. ISO eight hundred. I'm gonna I'm gonna work with that. I just have to get close enough to my subjects now and make sure that I'm still because when you move the camera as well, you can introduce shake. So now I just have to make sure I focus well in advance and then shoot with a very still, steady hand. And obviously my technique is to be still, you wanna tuck your camera in, just be as still as you can, breathe in, hold your breath, focus, click. And that's how I do it. That's literally how I do it. So I'm just gonna get out there now and get on with the job. I hope that was useful to you. I know it's been a long one and a lot of talking, really boring, but for those geeks out there, people who've wondered how I do it. That is how I do it. And let's get to it.